to stand up tall and bright. I want you to speak up clear and In a world overrun with the fake, delusional, and disingenuous, he stands as a beacon of truth. He is Abuki Cabal. Listening to Abuki Cabal. Welcome to the Abuki Cabal Show. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Back at it again. Welcome to another show. Um, thank you guys for uh, the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. If you have a moment and you, and you haven't liked, Share them, subscribe. Go ahead and do that now. Um, today, uh, I want to cover a uh, an article I found uh, that covers uh, what are African American single mothers teaching their daughters about romantic relationships. And I'm gonna see what you guys think about this because um, this is uh, a article written by a. Um, young lady and her perspectives on what uh, she was taught by her mother. And this kind of gets into um, some of the things that I have uh, talked about in the past about how um, how young ladies uh, of today or, you know, what, you know, Kevin Samuel used to call modern women tend to um, say about their mothers and uh, they tend to um, act as if their mothers didn't have any, any power in their relationships and they were just victims in their relationships and whatnot. And, and we'll see some of that in this. And, um, you know, what Dr. T talks about, uh, the Academy and how, um, basically it's everything that we're getting is from a woman's perspective and, uh, it is biased and biased in a way that is, I think unique to it, but what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we get into the article and I'll, I'll pause my, uh, pause it in between and, and give my commentary on, uh, some aspects of this article that I, um, that I take issue with, but I set it up and let you guys take a look at it. Alrighty. And I'll cue it up and we'll get going. What are African-American single mothers teaching their daughters about romantic relationships? The following guest post is from John Ethan Watkins Johnson, Ph.D. candidate at Texas A&M University and author of a new study entitled I'm Right by Doing What My Mother Says, a pilot study chronicling African-American single mothers' influence on their daughters' romantic heterosexual relationships. Single motherhood is a phenomenon that pervades families despite one's age, education, social hierarchy, or even race. Nonetheless, the prevalence with which single motherhood betides African-American families is markedly significant. Currently, 
African Americans comprise an estimated 9,418,000 families across the U.S., 46% of which are led by single mothers raising their own children due to spousal death, divorce, or having never married. Between the years 2009 and 2010, 51% of the 11,155,000 African American children born were to single mothers. These mothers, averaging 35 years of age, gave birth at rates twice as high as their married peers. Thus, African American single mothers unquestionably bear the brunt of rearing the African American progeny. Okay, we're going to stop there for a second. Okay. Now, we've all talked about these numbers before, and uh, a lot of these numbers, I mean, they, they give these reasons due to sp spousal death, divorce, or having never married. Uh, these divorce rates, they're initiated by black women. We've covered that uh, with the Monaghan, Monaghan Report uh, and why uh, 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 most black women are choosing money over family. Okay. That's not covered in this article, but there that's one of the reasons why. But it's, it's not it's not covered in here. And also uh, what's not covered in here is the 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 attitude uh, towards marriage uh, where um, these women see marriage as uh, tantamount to slavery. And um, I think we have to keep that in mind once we start getting into um, uh, the uh, later stages of this article. Uh, where uh, the young lady describes her account of an incident that happens in her childhood. Okay. Say so these, these single mothers, mothers averaged from 35 uh, years of age and gave birth at, at rates twice as high as their married peers. So we've covered this also where they are out here engaging in sex with multiple partners and whatnot, and basically just having fun, which was, um, the uh, the instructions that they were given uh, from the time that they were in um, junior high school all the way up, actually even grade school, all the way up to college, where they're being given these feminist narratives about how their relationships should be and how they should view men. Um, and in our communities specifically, how basically they should view black men. You know, uh, that's also coming from these these mothers and these grandmothers um, where they're saying that basically don't be beholden to a man. Um, you know, if you have your own money, uh, you can have your own uh, um, car, your own home and all of that. And basically, you don't need a man. You can have kids and you can raise those kids and see they never took into account, you know, the um, the importance of having a father uh, in the homes. And uh, I think uh, once we get down here, we'll we'll see that that's still uh, an issue that that's not really um, taken into consideration. And this this age of thirty five, I mean, you see that they basically um, waited, you know, all of their good years, you know, when they were uh, at, in the prime uh, uh, time to basically seek out a, a, a mate uh, to go ahead and to get married and to have children. When they're young, uh, they don't do that. You know, these ladies are averaging 35 years. So that's right when they are, are, are in the, the stage of um, having uh, uh, a lot of birth defects due to um, late stage pre pregnancies. Uh, it's not you're not advised to have have children at 35, you should have them, you know, in your 20s. But um, you start to see where uh, when you look into the the the, um, the literature, uh, the feminist literature, it, it indicates. I mean, it tells these women to basically you can you can put off marriage, you can put off having children, all of that. There's all kinds of scientific ways for you that and advances that will help you to have children. That's why you're starting to see. These young ladies, a lot of these, you know, track stars and even Serena's trying to have her second child now because her child wants uh, a brother or a sister. So now at, in her 30s, you know, she's going to start uh, trying to uh, have another baby. And the uh, the rate of birth birth defects, uh, the chances of birth defects uh, start to increase, you know, once you get up into those higher ages, you know, your 30s. 
you know, 35 on up people still trying to have children. And it happens. Some people do have, have, uh, have healthy children, but it, it's, it's not, um, it's not advised for you to do that. You know, um, there was another young lady who was, uh, I don't want to say she was an Olympic athlete and she's trying to have a baby right now. And she was advised not to do it because, of uh, the, the risk, um, of having, um, a, uh, a baby with significant birth defects. So I can't remember her name. Um, I should have, uh, should have looked that up while I was, uh, before I did this, uh, I apologize. Uh, I will try to add that into the, uh, the description, uh, if once I look it up, uh, but let's move along here. Okay. Often deemed a conundrum. African-American single motherhood manifests through the interwoven notions of race, gender, and class. In contrast to her white peers, her job is cumbersome. Given it often requires negotiating her oppressive characterization as black, female, and poor coupled with parenting, working, and attending school. Yet, this exclusivity cultivates the mother's self-respect, empowerment, and independence while raising her daughters to exemplify independence and her sons to embrace egalitarianism. In short, mothers have learned to raise their daughters and love their sons. This distinction warrants the African-American single mother to offer life lessons that are unique to her culture and her children's likely life trajectory. Okay, let's take a look at that. All right. Often deemed a conundrum, as African-American single mothers manifest throughout interwoven notions of race, gender, and class excuses. Okay. In contrast to their white peers, her job is cumbersome. I don't know what that means. I mean, everybody pretty much doesn't, you know, doesn't care for their jobs, you know, and, and find their jobs uh, to be somewhat of a hindrance. Okay. Uh, she says, given it requires negotiation, uh, her oppressive characterization as black female. Okay. I guess that's her way of saying that basically, you know, they're viewed as being, you know, bossy, uncooperative and, uh, you know, all the things that we uh, we, we talk about in this space uh, and poor coupled with parenting. Working and attending school. OK, so they, you know, these modern women, they, they want to take on all of these things on their own. You know, they say they don't need a man. They say they want to, you know, uh, to to basically uh, parent on their own, you know, work on their own. They demand that they get out and go work and and do all of these things and attend school and all of that, you know, and rack up all of this, this debt, you know, and live their best life. And then they're told later on, I can get a man. But by the time you've gone through all of that and you have, you've done all of that stuff, basically you've got a man as a secondary option. You don't look at it as something that's, that is, is, uh, instrumental, uh, and, and, uh, a much needed aspect of, of, uh, of your life. You know, you look at that man as something that you can, you can do with or without, you know, and when you do that, you'll find more reasons to not be cooperative with that man then you find to be co cooperative with that man. We're seeing that a lot and in a lot of American women, period. But but black women tend to be a lot more. Uh, as we look across social media, they se seem to be a lot more out of control. I mean, we're seeing more and more uh, of the, the tattoos, the, the wild um, uh, type of, of lifestyle. And it's like everybody has to basically accept me as I am. You know, I saw a picture of a, of a young lady who, who got tattooed, a giant tattoo of Capricorn at the top of her thigh, all the way on the lateral aspect of her leg, all the way down to her ankle in giant letters. Why would you do that to yourself and then want to go out and, and be looked upon in a respectable way? And I mean, you're young, you know, as you get older, that's going to be crazy looking, you know, so there's no. There's no no forethought in any of the, the 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 decisions that they're making, you know, um, the 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 effect of 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 how they look uh, among their their professional peers and whatnot, you know that none of that is being taken into consideration. It's just I'm gonna do what I want to do, 
and, you know, damn tradition, you know, to hell with with uh, with any sort of order and, and discipline uh, in um, with respect to, to the direction that my life is going to take. OK, so, um, you know, here we see these words down here, cultivating the mother's self-respect. Empowerment and independence. See, those 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 are the key uh, words that are that are constantly drummed into these these women. Self-respect, you know, empowerment and independence. You know, if your your drum independence is drummed in you, then then independence uh, uh, is not conducive with cooperation. Yet cooperation is something that men have to do in order to 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 come together to to to, uh, to accomplish tasks. You know, you see more cooperation amongst men and when they work together, you know, um, acceptance of of uh, having to work with your peers. You know, and this you have, you know, we, we see this constant battle between men and women in uh, in the workspace. Uh, for dominance, you know, um, things that come natural to you, uh, you are are to suppress uh, in order for you to uh, to to fit into this new uh, um, interactivity with uh, with male and female interaction. You know, I first first saw this when I was uh, when I was in the military. When I started seeing, you know, uh, um, them trying to. Um, include uh, female troops uh, into uh, uh, different roles, combat roles uh, uh, with men and expecting there not to be any sexual interaction with these individuals. And that was deemed as being unprofessional. OK, so you had these these, you know, these female officers were that were put over these these units and, uh, you know, they were basically putting these women into into these spaces with these men. And lo and behold, people were getting pregnant, you know. You cannot expect people to be in these in these these um, these roles and not interact with each other in a way that they would. They're young. They're in isolated places. Uh, you know, they're they're missing uh, their old. I mean, uh, other attachments in life, often overseas, you know, in combat situations in foreign lands, you know, and people tend to to gravitate towards towards the women that are uh, that are in their units if they're there. So you start seeing this in, in on ships in the Navy. You see this, um, you know, uh, in the Marine Corps, you see this, you know, all over the place in the army, you know, um, it's going to happen because it is natural for men and women to find each other attractive and to interact with each other in a cooperative way. Yet, you know, this great experiment that is feminism is starting to play out. We're starting to see the results of this injection of this new belief system in the 70s. And now we're starting to see how destructive this is, has become uh, to the family structure. And, you know, and in the, the, the earlier state of, uh, I mean, uh, beginning of this article, it started to talk about, you know, the numbers of women who are basically raising these young men and these young women. And we see the end result. It is highly dysfunctional and it is uh, disruptive and almost destructive to uh, the order of things. Yet we're also being told that basically we should ignore uh, this data and uh, continue uh, for the sake of, you know, raising women up, deifying women and putting them on the shoulders of, of men. Uh, and basically allowing them uh, this higher place of, of above men, all while also being demonized for um, wanting to interact with them in a way that is conducive uh, to the way we've always uh, uh, interacted with women uh, historically, from the time we were cavemen up to to um, modern the modern era, you know, and that is to create families and to reproduce and to perpetuate the species. But 
All right, let's get down to the other end of this. In short, mothers have learned to raise their daughters and love their sons. You know, I take issue with that. They've learned to raise their daughters to be better than their sons, and they've raised their sons to basically always put their sisters, mothers, and everybody else up ahead of, of their own needs. And that's why you see, you know, this, this, you know, scent mentality, this sucker type mentality out here where these guys will protect even the most ratchet woman. And the minute, just like in that Spirit Airlines video, where you see this, you know, this woman who's being told that her behavior, you know, is, is not going to be tolerated. And she keeps putting her hands on the man. He hasn't put his hand on her. He's basically just yelling at her, you know, and then, you know, when a guy comes in and says, okay, you know, Hey, that's enough. That's enough. She reaches over, over the guy who comes to protect her and then slaps the guy. So then the guy pushes, he got pushes the guy out of the way. And then he, you know, he clocks the young lady, but everybody's down on this man saying that basically he was wrong. And he shouldn't have shouldn't have hit the lady. But nobody said anything about this woman hitting this man and calling him, calling him, you know, uh, the, the shaming language. She called him gay several times, told him he had a little penis, you know, several times, just basically, pro, you know, provocatory uh, uh, language in order to try to to elicit a, 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 a response from this, this man. And then. After that, you have these other individuals. You're not going to fight no woman. You're not going to fight no woman. And then, you know, it's it's just it's, you know, these guys, these white knights come out and try to protect these women who are the 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 worst of the worst. Now, it used to be there was, you know, uh, an order of things, you know, a good woman was protected. You know, a woman of the streets, she was for the streets. You know what I'm saying? You know, if she was out there and she was a hooker, you didn't put a hooker on the same level as, you know, your mother who was going to work and raising kids and being a good mother, you know, and um, in, in a family, you know, who went to church, who, you know, uh, dressed modestly, you know, who, uh, um, you know, didn't talk um, in a in a uh, a manly way, did not, um, you know, uh, try to. Uh, belittle men and and just do all of this stuff that we're seeing today. You know, you have women, you know, talking to men in the most manly way to the point to where you're, you're, you're confused because you're looking at this woman and she's talking to you like she's something else. It's almost like you're looking at a rock and a rock is talking to you. A rock is not supposed to talk to you, you know? So it just messes with your program. So that it's just not a normal interaction. It's almost like a switching of gender roles that's taking place uh, uh, between these the, uh, between the sexes, and it's being pushed by a a group of women who uh, have basically developed a mythology to uh, to basically push women into a, a, a form of lifestyle that will uh, somehow they feel benefit women. Uh, by, you know, empowering them with money. So everything is basically solved with money. And then later on in life, when these women are trying to do these things that they were told that they could wait on and they can't, these women are having life shattering uh, uh, emotions behind figuring out that they've been lied to this whole time. But let's move on. Having been reared in a single mothered home during my secondary years, I garnered valuable instruction under my mother's tutelage concerning heterosexual relationships, intimacy, and African-American men. Provocative yet authentic, the lessons instilled self-assuredness, resilience, and high expectations for my prospective spouse. And until I met my husband, my mother's distinct wisdom from years gone by allowed me to persist. Often, I've wondered if African-American mothers who are single and successfully rearing children, offer a similar course of study to their daughters in an attempt. Okay. This part right here, I want to stop here and uh, basically talk about, you know, under her mother's tutelage uh, concerning heterosexual relationships, intimacy, and African-American men, provocative yet authentic, the lessons instilled a self-assuredness, resilience, uh, uh, expectation, and high expectations 
for my prospective spouse. Now let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. Yeah. They, 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 they have put extremely high expectations on potential spouses, i.e. every black man has to make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Every black man has to, you know, provide them with an extravagant home. Uh, every black man has to, you know, pay for their upkeep uh, and all of these other things beyond what they need. Everything is about luxury for them. And they also look back on their mothers with disdain and their grandmothers because they, they say that their mothers and their grandmothers didn't know any better. They didn't know any better. They lived in this squalor and let their men, you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, cheat on them. And and they basically bow down to their husbands in, in servitude. And, you know, it's basically this color purpling of the narrative. All of that took place, you know, uh, uh, in this these, these people's minds. And then when you ask them to produce some evidence that this is the way that 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 their mother lived, they never can produce any of that. They get all of this from watching TV, Lifetime specials, which Lifetime is just trash TV that basically just peddles the same narrative. Men are are out here, you know, victimizing women. You know, there's there's uh, there's always some kind of sexual assault or something on there that that that, you know, sh perpetuates this this victimization of women and this, you know, this characterization that women aren't appreciated, women aren't paid. All of this stuff is just constantly being funneled into these women. If you look in, 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 in all of the um, the way the movies are being uh, being uh, peddled nowadays, it has to have some LGBTQ uh, uh, representation. In it. it has to have some uh, highly visible feminist uh, uh, narrative in it. No matter what the movie is, it could be a horror movie. It could be a, 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 a sci-fi movie. It could be Star Trek. It could be Star Wars. There's got to be some kind of, uh, of of that other representation in there and, uh, so that we feel that that is normal. We have to see that, even though we don't want to see that. OK, if you, you know, you go into sections and you go to buy movies, there are genres you don't go into a genre of movie that you don't want to see. But in this new way of life, we're forced to go and consume content that we do not want to consume. And this is another part. This is the effect of it. You have little girls coming up saying that black men ain't shit. You have women who haven't even been in relationships yet saying that black men ain't shit. OK. So you have to ask yourself, where is that coming from? Where is that programming coming from? And if that starts at such a young age and gets up to this point, and they see their mothers as victims, and being being you know uh, downtrodden and subservient to these men, and 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 being described as a slavery, then they see these movies that see these women as as slaves, and that they didn't have any money, and all this other stuff. And then you have these people like Cynthia G. and all these other people out here saying that basically, you know, uh, uh, we are out here, you know, uh, basically just breathing up all their air. We shouldn't even be around. We we are a hindrance. To their very existence. That's where we are as a result of this type of thinking. But let's move on. To understand how other African American mothers influence their daughters' romantic heterosexual relationships, I explored what five women assert their single mother directly and vicariously taught them about love and African American men. The article entitled, I'm Right by Doing What My Mother Says. A pilot study chronicling African-American single mothers' influence on their daughters' romantic heterosexual relationships reports these adult daughters' description and interpretation of their mother's intimate relationships and demeanor, while comparing it to their own. Our findings indicate African-American daughters may 1. Unconsciously replicate their mother's romantic relationships. 2. Subscribe to their mother's lessons on men, love, and relationships. 3 imitate their mother's behaviors in relationships. 4. Unconsciously select mates whose effect and behavior parallel their fathers. See the excerpt below. Okay. Let's go through those. 
unconsciously replicate their mother's romantic relationships. So these single moms are basically teaching their daughters to be single moms. I don't know how many people have said that. Anger Man said it. You know, uh, BGS has said it. Uh, Kevin Samuels has said it. You know, uh, uh, Obsidian has said it. You know, so many people have said this. You know, Dr. T has said it. Dr. Neil has said it. You know, Gigi has gone through this. You know, so uh, everybody has all the PhDs in this space have talked about this very real phenomenon. So all that bad behavior and we're, we're going to see this with with this generation. You look at all these women, like I said, with the tattoos, with the multicolored hair, getting flued out, you know, going out, doing only fans and all of this, this, you know, this this Nicki Minaj and, and uh, you know, uh, Megan Thee Stallion type behavior, you know, uh, pretty much ho is life type behavior, we're starting to see these moms are basically teaching their daughters to be the very same as that. Now you got that sector. Then you got the other sector who basically are making all of this money and I've gone to school and, and got all their education and they're teaching their daughters. You don't, you don't, you depend on no man. You really don't need no man. Don't you take no shit off no man. And uh, everything is the man is a detriment to your progress as a human being, as a woman. So that's what we're, what we're getting. When you listen to these talking points, when you go and I mean, look, that whole thing with, with Dr. I mean, with, uh, with Umar and, and uh, Cynthia G, you know, that whole thing, you just listen to that thing. She was disrespectful to that man. She doesn't even have as much education as that man. She's disrespectful. She wouldn't let him finish his, his conversation. She did not answer any of the questions that he that he he leveled uh, uh, for her to to address. And that's the type of woman that we're seeing. She has droves of women that follow her her narrative. Now, they will will counter by saying that, hey, we follow Kevin Samuels and and and, you know, and blah, 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 Obsidian and, you know, and, um, you know, uh, uh O'Shea and, you know, BGS and, you know, we, we follow these people and then it's like, but we don't disrespect you. You know, we don't disrespect you. We don't, you know, we, we see it for what it is. We try to educate, educate you as to why you think the way you think and why you're doing the way that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're conducting yourself the way that you're conducting yourself so that you can come back around and counter that. Now, there are women in this space also that see it for what it is. You know, I have a friend of mine that basically says that looking at the, the woman in her family, she basically came to the same conclusion. She didn't. But she said if she was still uh, in the, the, the state where we're from, she probably would have would have been anti Kevin Samuels and whatnot. But she moved away and she was dealing with, with, a, 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 with a lot of modern women uh, that basically kept up a lot of mess. And now. You know, she's deemed as being down on 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 black females. But no, she's holding accountable for the what she sees. But the sisterhood is constantly trying to get her to put her blinders back on and to basically. Move as a herd in one direction, that's what they want all of these women to do is to move as, as a herd, that herd mentality. You know, later on, we're going to discuss that about how this herd mentality that you, you see it with 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 prosecution of, of black males and whatnot. These women are expected to move in one accord. You know, if I say that this man is, is no longer of any use to society, then all women need to follow in that same same direction. That's what we're seeing. That's not how the law is supposed to work. You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But now they take it to social media and you are destroyed in the social media platforms. And then it's taken up in the courts and the courts are full of women. You have tons of female judges, tons of female prosecutors. They put these people out here. So now, you know, they, they've given them representation in there, which they should have had also. Uh, but but you have to be able to be objective. If you are, if you cannot be objective in looking at these matters of, 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 of legality, 
then all you're going to do is you're just going to continue to basically vilify and and demonize these men and put them in cages because you don't feel good about how they conducted themselves. Okay. All while, you know, taking the agency from the from the women who were involved. No, this woman couldn't possibly have have known what she was doing. She was victimized. So therefore, we should give you life, you know. Now, if kids don't know what they're doing, why do we have a juvenile court system? Why is it that when black men were committing crimes in their teenage years, they were tried as adults? But black women, when they commit crimes, i.e. lying about their age, being in places, uh, trying to basically be involved with sexual activity with men and whatnot. They are, they're, they're taken out of the process. They're they could not, they could not possibly have known what they were doing. They're using the, the tools that they are used to using, which is their sexuality and their ability to be seen as, um, soft sexual, you know, and they get into these, these, these spaces where men are. No matter what you do, you're trying to keep them out by age, you know, uh, identification, whatnot. They put themselves into these spaces. And then when things happen, it's not their fault. It's the person who was there. You know, it's their fault. So, you know. We need to look at that. OK, we also need to look at the, the, the one sided way in which, you know, psychology, sociology and even medicine is being affected by this one-sided view. All of this is coming from this single mother idealism and feminism. Okay. They are number two. They uh, subscribe to their mother's lessons on men, love and relationships. So they subscribe. That's a, a kind way of putting it. They are poisoned by their mother's failures with men Love and relationships is more like it. You know? And if that, that single mother is jumping from man to man to man, those young ladies may be victimized in some way by them bringing in these men into the household. They don't talk about that either. Because obviously, you know, the mother has nothing to do with that. She cannot have any, uh, in any, uh, uh, uh you know, fault placed on her for not protecting her children from it being exposed to, you know, some man that has no relationship to them, you know, but that, that happens, you know, and then what, how does it affect the, the, the sons and the daughters when they see men constantly being run into the house in and out, in and out, in and out, because these women, are, these women are not going without sex. Hence the, uh, the, the data, uh, at the top where they were saying these women are having all having these babies unwed at a higher rate than people who are married. Okay. And we know from the data that they're not having, having uh, babies with these black men. They're having babies with men of other persuasions. Okay. All right. Number three, they imitate their mother's behavior in relationships more the same. They imitate their mother's toxic behavior in relationships, their hatred for men, the way she uses men. Or she looks at men in a way that characterizes them as a secondary option in life. Okay. Number four, unconsciously selects mates who affect and behavior uh, and behavior parallel their fathers see the excerpt below. OK. OK, so basically she's going to pick the same type of men that she saw her mother with. So if she was with Pookies, she's going to pick Pookies because she doesn't. That's what she feels like is going to be good for her is Pookies. OK. How many times did you hear Kevin Samuel say these women say that they want a man who's a high value and all that? And then he asks you, well, do you know any high value men? And have you, can you put yourself in, in the, the same room with a high value man? 
Do you, I mean, uh, uh, where do you know where high value men hang out? Do you know any of that? And I can guarantee you, if you got Capricorn and big letters down your damn thigh, you're not getting in any uh, event with any high value men. You know, if you got, you know, uh, uh, Captain Crunch colored hair, you're not getting in any 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 uh, a venue with high value men. It's just not going to happen. And, and, you know, time after time, we see these women, they don't even know how to dress themselves. They don't know how to put uh, how to how to what to wear, uh, uh, how to conduct themselves around a man. Uh, they, they eat out every single day. You know, they're not taking care of themselves. You know, uh, and then when you when a man expresses, you know, exercises his his options by going and dating a woman who is fit, cooperative, feminine, soft spoken. Then he's he's vilified. And they'll even try to, you know, try to basically. Destroy any opportunity he has to get with whatever woman that he's with, if they can. But let's move on to the rest of this article. Amber recalled once observing her father's infidelity. She stated, my mother and I were once in the car and looked over and there's my dad in the truck with some other chick. I said, I don't understand. Peering at the floor, Amber recalled feeling embarrassed for her mother, but reported her mother never confronted her father as her father's infidelity was a normal component of their marriage. Oftentimes he would reside with his mistresses for weeks or even months, then at his convenience, return home. Okay. Now you see what I'm saying? Doesn't that sound familiar? Now, isn't, it, isn't it shocking that every time you have some type of study or in some type of article, there's always some instance of mister in it where... The man, the father is out just having infidelity. He's just sleeping around all in front of the woman. I mean, we saw this in What's Love Got to Do With It. We saw this in damn near every black movie that they put out. It's always somebody cheating. And Ray, Ray was cheating. Everybody cheats. All the black men are just running around, just, you know, slawing out everybody, as Platinum says. Yeah. Just slowing our everybody. Just that's that's what we 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 just have no allegiance to anybody, you know. But then when you look at the data, you know, you look at and, and, and black men want to be married more than than black women do. It, it, you know, it just doesn't kind of add up. You know, I'm not saying that men don't don't sleep around because we know that they do. But nobody does anything for without reasons, okay? And then as you see in this this description here, she looks at her mother. Uh, with disdain because her mother doesn't confront her father. But this is her recollection uh, as a as an as a grown woman uh, and characterizing how she felt when she was a young child. You know, so you know that this is this may be not exactly how she viewed it as a child, but in retrospect as a grown woman. OK, so keep that in mind. So let's move on. Amber indicated that even as a child, she understood her parents' marriage was unhealthy and she vowed not to replicate it. However, Ember's first serious relationship was synonymous with her parents' marriage. With a broken tone and twiddling fingers, Amber recalled her first relationship, acknowledging he cheated on her and sparingly designated her as his girlfriend. For example, to a non-threatening audience he introduced her as his future wife. If mingling with women who piqued his sexual interest he reduced Amber's designation to friend. Amber also recalled this same boyfriend requesting her to mind him or follow his orders without questioning him. She smiled and stated she tried but was unable to meet his expectations. Therefore, he informed her that she was not conducive for his preferred lifestyle. While reflecting on this relationship, Amber passionately stated, I was really trying to get someone completely opposite of my dad. I'll stop that there. OK, so as you can see, I, I, I mean, this is, you know, she she really chose her words uh, with this. You know, here you see the characterization of being in a relationship as slavery. Mind him. What what I mean, no, I, no man, especially no black man, you know, is going to come out and say, you mind me. You know what I mean, you, you I mean, I can see if you said, well, you know, I, I just need you to, you know, follow my program, you know, uh, 
you know, whatever the case may be, but I've never heard uh, any of us use mind, mind me, you know what I mean? Or follow his orders without questioning him. Now, this is another thing that, that you, you hear countless black women bring up, follow his orders. Remember that tantamount to slavery that I told you about? That's what that is. They see being in a relationship and being cooperative, being, uh, 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 an asset to that man uh, as being slavery. Okay. And they add the cheating in there so that you basically feel sorry for them. That's the victim of uh, victimization part that basically they want you to believe that every man victimizes them in some way. And they always throw cheating in there because cheating is the worst thing that a man can do to a woman, you know, besides, you know, hitting her or some, something like that, but they always use cheating. Because in their minds, every man cheats, you know, but if you say that you can only, you know, and this is, uh, this also covers the take me as I am, you know what I mean? I can't do this. I can't do that, but I still want to be with you. So basically what they do most of the time is they're basically, they'll lie. They'll lie. They'll say that, yeah, I'm going to be this. I'm going to do that. And they'll get in that relationship and they expect you that over time, they're going to wear you down. And you'll just say, okay, I can take this because I'm getting 40% of what I want. So I'll just keep her. And if she's pretty, you know, Hey, that's that I can, I can do without the rest of that. So, and, and some men, they do some men fall for that. You know, if the woman's pretty and she, you know, she puts on a good face for the first, you know, six months or whatever, you know, or a year, then they'll go ahead and they'll lock her down. And then right after that, she's going to change. She's going to transform just like a, you know, like a Decepticon. She's going to transform. And next thing you know, she's going to be who she really is. She's going to show her true face. You know, and this show, this, this goes for any woman. You know, there are good ones out there and there are bad ones out there, but they'll always, they always have another face. Trust me. They always have another face. You know, and your job is to get around their representative. You know, I don't want to see your representative. I want to talk to you. And that's where you're trying to get to. But it takes you sometimes a long time to get to that point, especially if you don't have the right kind of father in your life to basically uh, take you down through that. That's why a lot of people uh, loved Kevin Samuels, because Kevin Samuels was able to to orate uh, in, a, in a masterful fashion. Uh, the way that uh, our interaction with women uh, should be. And. Uh, for those of us who didn't have fathers in our lives, you know, my father, you know, he gave me some of these, these tips and whatnot, but it wasn't in a, in a way that I could really, really just get it. You know what I mean? And then when I talked to him about some of this stuff later on, he said, well, I told you this stuff, but you weren't listening, you know? So, um, it, it's strange, but when Kevin was, was, was talking about these things, they hit home and they hit home in a way that. You had to listen. You had to to deal with uh, your shortcomings with regard to dealing with these women and being used by these women. You know, and I know a lot of you guys can uh, can relate to what I'm talking about. You know, they see us as a natural resource that they're supposed to go out and basically just just, you know, uh, cultivate and basically they, they harvest it and then they just throw you back out there after they plucked you of your, of your, your money, <laughs> you know, your job is to make their life better, you know, but their job is, is not to make your life better. It's basically to get as much out of you, uh, with as little effort as possible, you know? And if that's what you're getting, I'm telling you, to, to basically be smart about that and don't be, don't be a punk. Don't be a simp. Don't be victimized by these women out here. Now, you know, uh, you'll have to go through 25, uh, uh, ratchets in order for you to meet five good women. Always remember that. But these women would have you believe that oh, they're, they're, all of them are good, but we know that's not the case. And back in the past, women would, could could differentiate between who was not the same 
as them. There was no, there wasn't this sisterhood where all protect all women and all of that. None of that existed because they say, no, nah, she was for the streets and she probably lied and she probably put herself into that situation and blah, 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 blah. All of that stuff was taken into consideration when you were dealing with these people. Now, none of that is, is happening. We're in a different age now. We can only hope that people uh, who can think objectively and who can act, uh, actually uh, do uh, uh, a proper assessment of, of situations without feelings and whatnot, you know, uh, can return so that we can start getting some some uh, some normal decision making processes in, in the legal system and uh, with regard to some of these these uh, the education and um you know, the studies that are being being uh, being done uh, regarding men and women and our interactivity uh, uh, and day to day lives uh, in the workplace, uh, in our relationships and all of that. That needs to return. Science needs to be science. But it's being perverted right now. So let's move on. Mom and myself. And instead, I constructed another version of that reality. It was really profound for me because after they broke up and I broke up, we, Amber and her mother, talked about it and my mother and I were saying the same things. I condensed her 36 years into a two-year disaster. I was a concentrated version of her. I tried to create one that was different but it was the same. Raw and a bit controversial. It is our hope that this humble study serves as a catalyst to arousing discourse concerning the power of single motherhood. Further analyzing what African-American mothers teach their daughters about romantic heterosexual relationships, while also offering a meaningful contribution to understanding the African-American culture in general. Thank you Dr. Elsa Gonzalez Y. Gonzalez for your tireless advising throughout the article writing and publication process. To learn more about Janitha Watkins Johnson, look for her on LinkedIn. Okay. So there's the end of the relationship. And, and, and as you can see, you know, I mean, of, of the sorry, of the, the article, as you can see, you know, they go through this and, you know, they say that, you know. They hope that, you know, this will will. Um, help the discourse concerning the power of single motherhood. Further analyzing what African American mothers teach their daughters about romantic sexual relationships. Well, this article said a whole lot, but it really didn't dig really deep into what African American uh, uh, mothers, uh, single African American mothers, are, are teaching their their daughters. You know, it gave a gave this like it, it always does this color purple narrative about you know the cheating and the you know the 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 abuse and you know um, you know the slavery, the servitude, you know, it, it, it hit all those key points. But we all know that those are not present in every relationship. And, you know, uh, I'd like to see and I tried to look at the study, but I, I couldn't couldn't get into it. But uh, there's a link here. If you guys can get into it and and go through the study, I'd like to see uh, more of their data and and uh, some of their their interviews with other other um, uh, females who were raised by single mothers. Um, but I mean, we have have other um, stories about how single mothers have raised their their sons uh, and the the effects that being raised in a single uh, parent household uh, have on children. Um, that data is out there and it's not good. You know, so. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this in the description and um, I want you guys to you know tell me what you thought about that and um, no. Yeah. Uh, tell me what you think about that. And um, anything that uh, that that would be helpful, anything that I didn't cover um, that you'd like, uh, I'd like to uh, to discuss. Uh, I'm, I try to answer everybody's um, responses. 
uh, in uh, my comments. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this article and uh, I will try to be uh, a little bit more consistent with my, you know, with my shows. Uh, it's getting tough out there. The COVID numbers are jumping back up. I got about 12 patients right now. So um working that. Uh, no monkey pox. Uh, but I, I am seeing that and um, not happy with it. Not happy with it. Very, very uncomfortable, but you're not going to, you guys know how it is. Um, you guys, please like, share, and subscribe. It's been fun. Uh, and uh, I will see you on the next show. Like a mother.